Some illustrations in this presentation are collected from the book by uh, Burroughs Forosan, Data Communications and Networking by Mike Royal. We've seen how we can build local area networks, but the local area network, as the name implies, only spans a small region. So let's look how we can build larger networks. We want to build the networks out of the LAN standards in project 802. We have the standard 802.3, which is usually referred to as Ethernet. The development came out of Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, Xerox Park, in 1970s, and it has been the most successful of all wired LAN standards. There have been other standards, such as the token bus, which now is withdrawn, and the token ring, which was also very successful, mostly for the corporate environment, and it was an invention by IBM in Zurich. We more and more predominantly connect our computers to networks by wireless, and there we have the standard 802.11. And then there are other standards, such as Bluetooth and Zigbee, Zigbee being used mostly for sensors and smart price tags and similar small devices. So why not one LAN? There's a geographic aspect to it. You, you would like to perhaps connect nodes at very different locations. And a bus, star, or ring might not be the suitable topology for um, such a network. There's also an issue of performance. Since they're sharing one link, the more nodes you connect, the less share each node will get. So if you have 100 megabit Wi-Fi uh, and you have 10 nodes, they get 10 megabits per second on average in throughput each. Uh, if you would have 100 nodes, they would get to uh, 1 megabit per second of throughput each. There's also an issue of reliability. If the net one network that you have fails, then um, there is no connection whatsoever. If you instead build a network out of different local air networks, then if one fails, at least the others who are not on the failed segment could continue to communicate. And then there's an issue of security, where you would like to separate traffic. For instance, uh, accounting departments should be separated from engineering department within a company. You could extend LANs on three different levels, on the physical layer, on the data link layer, and on the network layer. If you do it on the physical layer, you talk about a repeater or a hub. It's pure signal regeneration or amplification, and the frames are not changed or affected in any way. When you collect LANs on a data link layer, we, we call the function a bridge or a layer 2 switch. It can connect LANs of different types, but they have to have the same data link addresses. So the 802.3 and 802.11 share address structure, and they could be connected. So on one port, you have an 802.3 wired network, and on another port of the bridge, you could have an 802.11 Wi-Fi. The bridge also allows to do traffic filtering, which I will explain shortly. And then you can build a network based on uh, extended networks at the layer 3. We usually refer to such a switch as a router. The advantage with in connecting networks together by a router is that they can use very different technologies, different standards, and they don't have to agree on an address structure on the data link level. This te terminology is not well defined, so you will see all confusing names on the switches, such as smart switches, dual speed hubs, and so forth. I will refer to them by the layer. Layer 2 for a data link switch, and layer 3 for network layer switch. The repeater, as I said, is just providing signal regeneration. The MAC protocol on both sides of the repeater must be identical. And a hub is just a multiport repeater that could connect several different LANs, more than just one. But the extended LAN functions as one LAN. So if it would use CSMACD with collisions, it would be one collision domain for the whole network. And frames that are sent by one node propagate to all the receivers on all the segments of the extended local air network. That's why bridged networks have been introduced. Without the bridging, with just an amplifier regenerator, it looks like one big bus network in the top picture here. But with a bridge, you separate them into two separate networks, where if you have again a CSMA CD, a node that communicates on the left side will not cause a collision on the right side. So that means that the bridge has to be able to filter traffic. If the traffic on sent on the left side is destined for a node on the left side, then it should not be passed over to the right side, and vice versa. 
A bridge can connect LANs with different data link protocols, as I mentioned, 802.11 Wi-Fi or 802.3 Ethernet. So it forwards complete frames and it buffers frames if the link on the outgoing side is not currently available. And as I said, it keeps traffic local. So it only forwards frames to the segment where the destination address belongs. And it needs a table for that, mapping MAC address to ports ports being the inputs and outputs on the bridge. And this it needs to, to learn from the connected stations. So let's look at how that can be done. The table looks as illustrated here. You have MAC addresses, and then it says which port that MAC address is. If a frame comes in on port 1, and the destination address is also on port 1, then the bridge will not forward it to uh, on port 2. But if a frame comes in on port 2, and the destination address is on port 1, then that frame will be forwarded from port 2 to port 1. How can the bridge know this? The bridge doesn't change anything in the frame. It only looks at the destination address in the address forwarding table that it has, and if the frame should go out on another port from compared to the one that where it arrived, then it will be forwarded on that port. And that's all what the bridge does. It also has to check the CRC in the frame because it cannot trust the address if the CRC has failed. And it can do flow and error control back to the sending node, but that can also be left for the receiver to do. If the link on the outgoing port is busy, then the bridge will buffer the frame. We call the function of learning addresses for learning bridge. How can a bridge learn the locations? Any suggestion? Think for a while. Well, here's how it does. For each arriving frame, it extracts the source address and the port number and adds that to the full table. So it knows on which port the frame came in and it knows what source address, what sender address that the frame had. And that can be marked that, that the sender address is connected to that port. Once it has received a frame, it will examine the destination address and check if it's already in the forwarding table. If it is, it will transmit the frame on that port which is listed in the table. Otherwise, it doesn't know where the frame should go, so it sends it on all ports except the one where the frame came in. But then, when the reply comes, when the acknowledgement comes for that frame, the bridge will learn where that destination address was, because that will be the source address or sender address for that acknowledgement going back to the original sender of the frame. So here's an example. We have a bridge with three local area networks connected to port 1, 2, and 3. Originally, the, the forwarding table is, is empty. Now A sends a frame to D. So D is located on LAN 2, and A is located on LAN 1. So the bridge gets a frame on port 1, and therefore it can mark that the address of A is located on port 1. That's all it knows at this point. The frame is being sent on both port 2 and port 3 because the bridge doesn't yet know where D is located. Then E sends a frame to A. That frame arrives on port 3 of the bridge. So the bridge can now note that E is located on port 3. And then if B sends a frame to C, then we can note that B is located on port 1, meaning LAN 1. And then with acknowledgments of this frame sent, the, the node will build up further entries in the table. And when all nodes have communicated, they will all be known in the forwarding table of the bridge. Nowadays, wired networks are built as switched networks. So we talk about switched Ethernet. That means that nodes are connected to the switch by point-to-point -point links, so there is no collision domain for a node. There's one port per node, and you don't need CSMA CD. The ports and the nodes communicate by full duplex communication, so they can both receive and send at the same time. And flow and error control can be done end to end, or between the switch and the, the, send the nodes. The switch forwards frames based on the destination address, as explained before. And the learning algorithm for building the forward table is exactly as I described it in the before, even now when there's only one node per port of the switch or bridge.